Hey guys, I'm Jody Taylor, a university program specialist here at Google, and today I'm going to be walking you through a little bit about our interview process. First, we'll be going over an overview of the interview process and what you can expect when you're going through our interview. Secondly, I'll be going over how to build a strong response. What is the framework you should utilize? Third, we'll actually have an opportunity to practice a leaked Google interview question together. And lastly, we'll go over some interview basics. So Google is made up of incredible people, and there are some core central tenets we're looking for as we're hiring folks. One is how a candidate thinks. How does a candidate use data, logic, and reasoning as they're responding to a question? Two is their leadership skills. That doesn't necessarily come in the form of a title. What leadership means is emergent leadership. How are you proactive? How are you taking leadership um, initiatives on campus or in your job? Three is role-related knowledge. That doesn't necessarily come in the form of a fancy internship. What that means is transferable skills. Do you have the basic skill set to transfer into the role that you're looking for at Google? And lastly is Googliness. Googliness is this really nebulous word that we kind of made up and essentially means intellectual curiosity. It means are you willing to collaborate, work with other people, and think 10x or at scale. But today in this presentation, we're going to be focusing on that first tenant I mentioned, which is how a candidate thinks. So after your resume screen, oftentimes you'll be invited to a interview at Google or on the phone, um, and you'll be invited to a GCA interview. GCA stands for General Cognitive Ability, and that sounds like a fancy word or a really scary phrase, but in reality, it's just how do you break down complex problems and come up with really thoughtful solutions. The GCA interview is broken up into two parts. The first part is the behavioral part of the interview. Those are past behaviors and assessing those past behaviors. So a sample behavioral interview question could look like, tell me about a time when you led a team. Tell me about a time when you communicated effectively. Tell me about a time when you failed. The second part of a GCA interview is the hypothetical or situational part of the interview. And those are questions that are assessing real life Google situations that you may actually face. We'll walk through that in a second. We ask these questions for really specific reasons. One, it's an evaluation of your problem-solving skills. How are you using reasoning and rationale and data to solve complex issues? Secondly, it's an insight into your working style. And lastly, it's an opportunity to talk through problems that you actually may face at Google or other Googlers have faced in the past. You may have heard that we ask really complex questions like, how many golf balls can fit inside a 747 jet? We actually no longer ask those questions and instead have moved towards those hypothetical or situational questions. So what is Google assessing when we ask these sorts of hypothetical or situational questions? One, it's your understanding of the question. So oftentimes your interviewer will give you too much or too little information. We wanna make sure that you're understanding the core and central issue. So making sure that you're distilling through all of the excess noise and excess words and making sure that you're really getting to the core issue at hand. Second is your preparation strategy. We don't mean how much you studied the night before about Google. What we mean is how much information that's been given to you. Are you able to actually thoughtfully parse through that information and formulate a coherent and dynamic response? Third is your ability to identify solutions. So these responses are often open-ended. There is no right or wrong way to answer these GCA questions. More importantly, how are you able to identify a solution, justify that solution, and communicate that solution to your interviewer? So now we're gonna walk through a framework of how to build a really strong response. Please keep in mind that this framework is not prescriptive. There may be um, some questions that require all of these elements of the framework, some questions that only require a couple. We just want you to keep this in mind as you're going through the interview process. The first part, always take a moment before responding. These questions are often complex or have a few layers. Please make sure that you're taking a moment to respond. Even feel free to ask the interviewer to repeat the question or say, can I have a moment before responding? Also feel free to bring pen and paper and write down the question as the interviewer is asking it. Secondly, ask clarifying questions. Like I said earlier, oftentimes you'll get too little or too much information, and you wanna make sure you're extracting out all the information from the interviewer so that you can appropriately and effectively answer that question. Third, share logical assumptions. Once again, you're not going to have all the information that you need to answer this question, so you're going to make some logical leaps in order to formulate an appropriate response. Don't worry, we'll go through what this looks like in a second. Four is show your work. 
So that doesn't necessarily mean showing your interviewer your pen and paper with all your notes. What that means is communicating to your interviewer your thought process. Communication is incredibly critical during this time. As you're thinking and as you're iterating through your solution, make sure that, of course, you're writing it down, but also communicating it in a succinct and coherent manner to the interviewer. So let's say you come up with an incredible solution and you communicate this to your interviewer. Don't just leave it there. Make sure that you consider pros and cons or you think about how you would measure success. And lastly, tie it back to the role if you can. Oftentimes these questions are role related, meaning that the question that you'll get will be really specific to the role that you're applying for. And so if you can, tie back your answer really nicely to the role that you're applying for. Now I'll invite my colleague Kelsey up and we're going to work through a leaked Google interview question together. Now I'm here with my coworker Kelsey and we are going to go through a leaked interview question together. Hey Kelsey. Hey, hi everyone. The first question is, Imagine you are in charge of organizing the grand opening event of a new Google office. How would you plan this event? Awesome. So please remember the steps in building a really strong response. So first, always take a moment before responding. And secondly, remember to ask clarifying questions. Here are some clarifying questions that I would ask. Where is the new Google office? Cambridge, Massachusetts. Is there a budget? You can decide the budget. There was a similar event in the New York City office last year and their budget was $50,000. Wonderful. And how many people are attending? 100 people. So Kelsey took a moment before responding to the question. She also asked some really thoughtful, clarifying questions. And now she's going to share some logical assumptions. Here are some of the assumptions that I would make. Assumption number one, I will assume that there is a facilities team on site to help me organize this event. Assumption number two, I'll also assume that the objective of this event is to welcome new Googlers to the Cambridge office. Assumption number three. Since New York City is a larger city than Cambridge, I'll assume this grand opening will be smaller. I'll also assume we have a $10,000 budget across 100 people. Remember the framework. First, Kelsey took a moment before responding. Secondly, she asked those really thoughtful, clarifying questions. Third, she shared out her logical assumptions and now she's going to show her work, which means actually sharing out her thought process so far. I'm assuming we have a budget of $100 per person. I'm also assuming I will have the capacity to coordinate with someone in the Cambridge office. Lastly, I will also assume all logistical needs can be solved by local vendors. Here is an example of an ideal Google solution. First, I'm assuming there is a facilities team on site to assist with this project, and all logistical efforts can be supported internally. I would reach out to that team to begin planning and to assess if I will have to use outside vendors. Second, I'll assume we'll have a budget of $100 per person. Therefore, I know I'll have ample budget for food, drinks, and decor. Third, because the objective of the event is to welcome new Googlers to the office, I would ensure that I am inclusive of all Googlers in my planning. And finally, I would collect an experience feedback survey from the New York City event and incorporate it into my planning. So once again, Kelsey took a moment before responding. She asked those clarifying questions. She shared out her logical assumptions. She showed her work. But remember, don't just leave it at the exemplar answer. Take it to that next step and either consider pros and cons or think about how you'd measure success. Here is how I would measure my success for my solution. Sending out a post-event survey to the attendees to measure impact against the intended objective, capacity to stay within budget, number of attendees, and will my project plan be used to plan future grand openings? So we just walked through a leaked Google interview question together. Not so bad, right? Now you'll have the capacity to actually practice at home. We'll share another leaked Google interview question with you and feel free to take some time to practice at home as well. So here is another leaked Google interview question that you can practice at home. Imagine you're working on an email product and a competitor starts charging a $5 monthly fee for their product. How would you assess the situation and what recommendation would you make to your team? So here's what interviewers are thinking as you're answering these questions. One, did the candidate understand the question and including the basic problem? Two, did they ask clarifying questions? Remember, clarifying questions are incredibly important to get to that right answer. Three, what relevant information, stakeholders, and variables were considered? 
please keep in mind that the interviewer may say things as you're asking those clarifying questions such as, you decide, or you pick, or you choose. Feel comfortable in that ambiguity and continue to work through using your best assumptions. Did the candidate identify multiple solution options? Remember, there is no prescriptive way to answer these questions. There are multiple right answers. Just choose the best one that you can justify. Were they able to reasonably justify why their solution was the best option? Communication is incredibly important during this process, so making sure you're communicating why you're justifying this particular solution. And lastly, did the candidate incorporate any feedback, hints from probing questions? The interviewer is there to support you and to help you through your journey as you're answering this question. So if they're giving you feedback, make sure to incorporate that feedback and pivot as necessary. Thank you so much for tuning in to our interview prep guide. We hope you found it helpful. We hope to see you at Google one day. Bye. Bye.